and welcome to What's Happening. I'm Gail Burke. I'm here with my co-host, George Bins. Tonight we have Professor Michael Gendry with us. Uh, Michael is the author of a, a book that recently was published, and we are, we are going to be discussing two of the ballot questions that are going to be on the November ballot. Uh, question two, which is lifting the charter school cap, and question four, which is whether or not to legalize marijuana, recreational marijuana. Welcome to the show, Michael. Thank you, Gail. Um, let's start off with question two. Lifting the charter school's cap, a yes vote on question two would give the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education the authority to lift the cap, the cap allowing up to 12 new charter schools of, or expansions of existing charters each year. Michael, you don't agree with that, do you? No, I don't. I, it took me a while to figure it out um, because I've visited a few charter schools, well, actually two, to be honest, in Massachusetts, and they were very impressive, both of them. The first one is the Mystic Valley Regional Charter School, uh, whose theme is American history and, and uh, constitution. It's a fantastic school. Which I visited with which you. Which you visited yeah. with me, yes, I know. And, and, and other people that I wanted to uh, show it to also came along. Uh, and the other one is uh, a charter school in, in Lowell. And I was also very impressed by what they do and how they teach kids. Uh, and so I was expecting actually to vote yes to lift the cap. But I started researching the whole charter school issue. And I talked to people, I talked to parents doing research, and, and I really came to a different conclusion. I'm not changing my position on the fact that some charter schools are totally outstanding, and I totally understand why some parents would definitely want their kids to be in, in, in those charter schools, because they're, they come out um, on top, basically. But I think in general, um, if you ask teachers and superintendents and, and uh, parents who do their research, um, you would find that there are more people who are skeptical of this approach. Well, I can understand how uh, teachers, superintendents, uh, and the unions don't want the charter schools because it's competition for them. But my feeling is that there aren't enough charter schools. Now, the cap has not been lifted in five years. Mm -hmm. And in order to open up a charter school, it takes a lot of work. And here is the, all the rules and regulations to open up a charter school. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Oh, I, I uh, appreciate that. I know it's very difficult. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> it seems to me that uh, a lot of charter schools c go, go into business and then they drop out of business. And uh, it seems that there is a, a sort of bureaucratic, you know, as soon as the Department of Education is involved and sort of pushes for it, I have a strong suspicion that the educrats and the, the people pushing for the tests and all the rest, they're, they're, all, they're all pushing for the same thing. And uh, this person that I'm in touch with um, via Facebook, because she's the president of the chapter of for um, U.S. by in New York, her name is Michelle Moore on Facebook. Uh, she and I have been talking about about this issue, and and basically we came to the conclusion that the vast majority of the new charter schools, or a, a large number, are what we ended up calling vulture cha charters. In other words, they recycle the teachers who are not that great but still want to be teachers, they recycle the tests that the testing agencies want, and the kids are recycled uh, as much as, as, as is possible. And, the, and, and it's true that the general advantage of the charters is that the parents are involved. They must be involved mm. because they have to apply and it's, it's a lot of work. Um, but if you do the research, and I did talk to Sandra Stotsky about this, and basically she says there is no um, evidence that charter schools perform better than the usual traditional public schools. I mean, if Sandra Stotsky says this... I am shocked to hear that. I am really, really surprised I to called hear her up to that. find out. Yeah, I did. Well, yeah. The point you're missing, I think, is that the parents are disappointed with the typical 
public school education. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some parents who are well enough off, they oh, can yeah. send their kids to okay, yeah. the better schools. Right. Sure. Shore Country Day, yeah. Brookwood, Absolutely. Yeah. Waring. There's Absolutely. a whole string of them. Yeah. St. John's Prep. Yep. Um, then there's also the class of people that used to get disappointed with the public schools, and they mm -hmm. would send their kids to the parochial schools. Correct. They're disappearing. Yeah, so what sort of happens, in my estimation, is that the charter schools are really a parochial school without a cross on the wall. They have a lot of the same characteristics. Um, they wear uniforms. They have a strong moral characteristic to the education process. Mm. And the best thing of all is no excuses. The dog ate my homework doesn't cut it. Yeah. So that they are much more demanding and they get results. Now, the, part of the concern is that, yeah, they... Uh, are what you call recycling teachers. Well, they also take in people who are very good at teaching but don't have all the certificates and the licenses and all the paraphernalia that goes along with the, uh, the public school system, which having two granddaughters in the education system, I understand that is a morass. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they have the ability that if the teacher's not cutting it, they're fired. They're gone. That's right. That's true. No so, unions. Well, so let me, you want me to try and respond? Yeah. I can go on for an hour. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. We don't have enough time, um, George. <laughs> no, but the thing is, I think what you described is the situation for the good charter schools like the one the one in Malden. Did you come and visit? No, I didn't make no, the okay. trip. I mean, yeah. it's, it's just an impressive school. Um, I do not believe that, that all charter schools have a dress code and all the rest of it. Uh, they may have some stronger disciplinarian, just, dis, 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 you know, discipline. The, be the better ones do. The, well, yeah. that's that's my point. The, yeah. My point is that the the better ones, maybe the twenty percent, are are. Well, that's you know, I have a problem with this. The twenty percent. There's no data out there. <laughs> if you take well, they they go out of business. That that that. Oh, that's, understand. That's right. It's they they're given five years. That is years. the beauty of the system. And if it isn't gone. working. They're gone. But yeah. there are a lot that go out of business. That's the point I'm trying to make. So, so if, what? But that's a good thing, Michael. Well. It means a lot of people but try. I mean, if you compare and contrast, you talk about the parochial schools that are great. And I agree with you. They don't go out of business. They are going out of business. No, but that's the a, traditional parochial schools that were the sample or the model for you, and, and I kind of agree with you. But they were all parochial not going schools. Out, what? I'm sorry. They were not going out of business. It's because they were solid schools that parents would send their kids to those schools. But not all parochial schools are wonderful either. They had their problems. I agree. But what do you say to the parents of these 30,000 to 40,000 students who are on a wait list to get into these schools? Sorry, we can't accommodate I you. I would want the kid to go to a good charter school. Of for course. Sure. A good charter school. Depending on what well, they're in now. a good now. charter school, not any charter school. That's well, the issue. If, you're, well, if your the, child is in a very poor, and I don't mean poor dollar-wise, but in a very poor school situation, you're desperate. You're looking for help. And you're looking to charters. You're looking for parochial. Right. Now, if the parochial are not there and, you, and the charters are full, what are you going to do? You can never make up the time yeah, for it's, these it's a kids. Tragedy. The it years really are yeah. passing but, but I do by. not believe that, that from talking to parents, okay, and I can read you the testimony of a parent that I am in contact with. She said originally she thought that charters were a good alternative to traditional schools because of the discipline. Uh, in learning. Uh, while more parents than ever are placing their kids on waiting lists, I find that they do not deliver on what they publicly present. I heard that they can and do weed out the uncontrollable students, but after talking to a parent outside of the charter school this past fall, she told me that they don't take care of every problem child. She was going to pull her out at the end of the school year. I also heard that they will fill to capacity younger grades, but over time students leave for whatever reasons. Uh, leaving the number that actually graduate from charters very small. Well, it's it's not for everyone. That's but, for sure. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, you, you look particularly in most of these charter schools, if not all of them, are in very poor districts. So they're serving 
very poor children well, that don't have I go any back alternative. To the, I, uh, Gail, I, I, I don't <coughs> disagree with you that it sounds like if things are bad, you want a solution. You need a solution. Well, you need you want to have a solution. However, Sandra Stotsky unambiguously says there is no evidence that charter schools perform better. Well, it's the I parents, disagree with Sandra Stotsky. Okay, fine. I'll go on record as saying that. Okay. And I like Sandra, and I think she's done a remarkable job with the Common Core business. But okay. as far as the charter schools, I'm sorry, I disagree with her. Well, you know, it's numbers you know, that, 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 that show that ultimately they don't learn more than in the regular public schools. That's, that's well, it depends on which, what numbers, where these schools that she's talking about. I mean, well, you it's can, an aggregate. It's an aggregate of yeah, all but you schools. Yeah, but you can take schools from whatever area you want and compare them with a charter school that's not doing so well, and you say, well, they don't do that good a job. Then you take kids from Lawrence or Lowell, and they're put into a charter school that mm -hmm. is doing better than the schools they came from, and the parents will say they're doing a great job. But, okay, there is another issue or another slant to the whole thing. If parents were allowed to take part in the education or the, the, the curriculum of their kids, which of course now is precluded because of the common core fraud, basically you could call it that, um, but th they are not allowed to do that, then you would have local control and the parents would implicate them, you know, in, in become more involved with their kids. And, and also the teachers would be more receptive to parents' requests and so on and so forth. No, so, I'm sorry, Michael, but they're not receptive to parents interfering. Well, but that's, Most that's teachers the are the not. But the problem, the problem is not so much the teachers per se. It's the entire system that takes away from them their ability to um, to innovate because they're 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 channeled into these crazy forms of curriculum that have been imposed upon them without any input from anybody else but the testing agencies, basically. But don't you think, because of Common Core, we're going to find more and more parents that are looking for alternative methods? But and in, charters, I mean, it's but only... But the charters are Common Core aligned. Right, but they don't have to be. No, they have to be. If, if they're run by, if they're Horace Mann <laughs> charter schools, they have to be. Yes. If they're Commonwealth charter schools, the board that determines how the charters run and the parents have much more say in what goes on in those okay. schools. Mm -hmm. And well, those are the kind of charters, that's like Mystic Valley, that's the kind of charter I, school I, it is. I, As I said, you know, I absolutely approve of <laughs> Mystic Valley and the yeah. other schools like that. Yeah. I think these so are really fantastic schools. So really the issue schools. comes down to, how do we get more Mystic Valleys? Yeah. That's exactly and right. By, that's exactly and right. By killing the program or cutting it back or restraining it, Yes. The chances of developing another Mystic well, Valley become uh, less probable. You know, how, how, I, I, I honestly doubt that the DESC is enamored with, with Mystic Valley. I, I really think, I've, I've, I've heard things. No, they're not. There's a lot of sniping going no, on, horribly, it, horrible it's sniping. It's competition for them, that's why. No, I'm, no, they're trying to almost kill Mystic Valley. Well, because it's doing so well. It, again, it's competitive no, compared but, I mean, you to don't the, kill the traditional person. schools. Yeah, but they're trying to kill uh, Mystic Valley. Yeah. DESC is trying to kill. Yeah. That's not allowing yeah, that's for competition. No, no, it isn't. Yeah. Well, that's... You kill the competition. There is a lot of difficulties, yeah. a lot of concerns with the education system in this country. It is a big problem. Yeah. Um, we had a discussion with Jerry Paraseller a while ago talking about that very issue. And, yeah... If you look at some of the gross numbers, Massachusetts looks good compared to the rest of the world and looks exceptionally good compared to the rest of the United States. But at the same time, we had the discussion of, well, there's all sorts of jobs available and people aren't trained or educated to handle them. So there's a major disconnect between mm -hmm. the statistics to say you look good and the actual what are you going to do with this yeah. education? The real world. The whole real world <clears throat> issue of the number of kids that go to college and come out with a humongous debt. And not much well, else. But and I, they can't get a job to pay it off. Yeah. So, I it's, mean, there's a whole bunch of issues. So, yeah, there so are this is one issues. attempt to fix a piece of it. 
Well, I, I can tell you that, that it seems to me that it's a little more, com even more complicated than what you're saying. The, 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 the high cost of higher ed is, 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 is one thing, and, and then the, you know, the, the debt and all the rest. But the issue to me is more like, what do they arrive in college knowing, you know, a hard, you know, real knowledge of, you talked about, I think, with Jerry, the um, classics. You, you brought yeah. up Shakespeare and stuff. What I think matters is that they have to have a pretty good command of the English language and the subtleties. And with Common Core, it has gone down. Yeah. And it will yeah. continue going down, number yeah. one. Number two, in math, they end up with a weak algebra, too. Yeah. They don't have yeah. cal calculus. So why, you know, why don't you ask parents to pressure Jerry Parasilla to do the right thing, which is to end Common Core, uh, the mandates, and all the rest. That's the what parents should do. But, well, but, the, when parents try and do that, Michael, it takes time. In the meantime, no, your child or your children is suffering. It's you horrible. don't have right. the time. There's no so, do-over. No. For I me. agree. That's why I collected, I don't know how many yeah. thousands of I understand, pictures. but yeah. that, that's another but the, issue. But that, the Common Core is not the issue right now. It's mm, well, the charter schools. And the charter okay. schools are an avenue for parents. And it's an alternative for parents. Some parents may not like it. It may not be for their child. Yeah. Okay, but what about all the others? So when you, when you vote yes on question two, you're saying, okay, you, they're, we're lifting the cap. We can have 12 more charter schools this year. Some may be really well, really well run. Some may not be. Okay, but you may just end up with some like Mystic Valley. And the point you made is that charter schools fail and they go out of existence. If yep. they're not doing any better than the local public school system, they're gone so. Yeah. But the ones that are doing better, they survive. And that's the whole essence of our basic system of having competition trying something different. If it doesn't work, give but it see, up. You see, the competition idea is fine if, if some of the ideas could be adopted by the not so good or not so well performing schools. But with the system the way it's set up, basically it's not going to happen that way. It's not going to. That's right. You're very no. in the traditional public schools, it's not no, going to happen. No, I know. And that's why we have to go so the for something you're... else. Uh, There's refer no time, Michael. Well, the, time is wasting for these kids. The point you're making is very accurate, that <clears throat> if there is some innovation showing up in a charter school someplace, it mm. is not going to filter back into the public no, school system. No, 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 no. But it will filter back into other charter schools. And they well, will, that, that I'm not even sure because uh, that, well, well, we're with the this research and, I've done says it's happening. Okay. Well, uh, I think Michelle Moore, um, uh, Moore or uh, Earl in, in New York would disagree with you. Okay. Uh, I mean, I, I think well, we can continue okay. that conversation yeah. because it's, it's very interesting. But, but I have the sense that, that this push for charter schools coming from the DESC as, as it currently is, I don't trust them. I think they've shown yeah. how, you know, uncaring they are about, you know, even ha having a d decent discussion about Common Core, I just don't trust um, yeah. the, 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 the team in place. Yeah, there's another right issue now. of this whole thing I think that needs to be discussed in that um, there is a criticism of charter schools because they take money away from the schools. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. They, they, well, they, no, because, well, no. Okay. <laughs> well, no. Because the money doesn't belong to the school. That's right. Right. Well, okay. The money yeah, okay. goes with the kid. That would be fine. It I is agree fine. That. That's would, the way it works. I, 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 there should be, there should be um, portfolios or whatever you want to call them for chi for a, each child to carry his or her <coughs> um, <coughs> education money. I, 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 would, I want to read that's, you. No, that's the way the system works. That well, when a kid goes to, if somebody wants to go to Beverly High School from Manchester, the city of the town of Manchester has to pay tuition to the city of Beverly for it. Right. The same thing is true of the charter schools. When a kid goes out of the public school system to the charter school system, the city or town he comes from pays tuition to that charter mm -hmm. school. 
The money belongs to the kid. It goes with the kid. Right. Okay. I, I don't that, disagree at all. I, I, I think that seems to be a, a good a good a yeah. good way of putting it. But you started off saying the 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 Manchester school yeah. system. It's it's really each child that that has the money it should should have. The it money. Yeah. That is the yeah. way the right, system right, works. Right. Um, I just want to read one statistic, and then I hope we have time to get into question four. Uh, in 2016, 98.5% of Boston charter school graduates were accepted into college, with almost 90% headed to a four-year school, not a two-year school. Those numbers are on par with the state's best school districts, including Newton. So I thought that was an interesting yeah. thing to find out. Um, you want to talk about four? Yeah. Do, you want to, do we have time to, to talk about question four, the marijuana question? Yeah. Okay. We'll start on it. Let's All go. right. Okay. Um, question four is to um, allow recre recreational marijuana in Massachusetts. Um, they, I read an article in today's Salem News by Dr. James Gessner, president of the Massachusetts Medical Society, who disagrees uh, with allowing it to happen uh, for various reasons, including health and safety and uh, as a gateway drug for opioids or other, other drugs. That was his take on it. Um, and f for young people to have the opportunity to indulge in it, because we know that who's going to regulate it? Who's going to make sure that it's only... 21-year-olds uh, that are getting it because, you know, younger kids always are able to get the cigarettes or the liquor, and it's not going to be any different with marijuana. Well, the, the worst part about, well, there's a lot of problems with the, the way it's proposed. One is the edible versions of it. Yes, yes. yes the Mary B. Right. Tokus cookies. Yep. And yeah. gummy bears and, and all the things yeah. else that are drinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and yeah. you have no idea whether somebody's indulging or not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the one that bothers me mostly is if you get into the chemistry of how it works, the cannabinoid, which is the active ingredient, H item THC? cannabinoid, THC, yeah. THC, yeah. tetrahydrocannabinoid, the whole <laughs> nine yard. Say right. that again, George. <laughs> My tongue will fall out, probably. <laughs> but it is working on the same sensors in your brain that opium works on. Mm -hmm. So that is the theory behind it's a gateway drug. And the problem with any of these addictions is your body eventually or your brain eventually becomes resistant to the effects of it. So you've got to have more. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to imagine that, well, after I've been smoking a joint almost every hour around the hour, uh, why don't I just pop a pill? Mm. And you're yeah. into the next level, the next level. And we don't need to aggravate the problem we've got, already got with the opium and the heroin and all these kinds all the of things. All the other things the kids are, are into these days. And you, you're a teacher. You know, you, would you want to see this? In your classroom? No, I mean, generally, philosophically, I, I would be more of a libertarian. I would say, you know, whatever someone does, if it does not intrude upon the freedom of another person, is fine. However, they have to know the consequences of what they do. And these are little but children. These that, are little children, yeah, and they don't. They don't know. And, and they don't know. And the parents should have the authority to not have to fight. Oh, you know, pretty much define the rules, and then not have to fight. Uh, the rest of the society, especially their mm -hmm. peers, who push these things on the on the kids. Yeah. And we're, we're dealing with it because some of these kids will be old enough to drive. And, yeah, well, you know, I agree with that. It, well, it's it, technically an issue that nobody <laughs> under the age of 21 is supposed to be yeah. able to get. And supposed to is part of the problem. Yeah. How do you control it? Who's yeah. going to manage it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, okay. we've, we've I want to ch chime in here and say, uh, you know, obviously at some point people will have law enforcement enforcement officers. They'll have to check on whether someone <laughs> has this thing in their blood or in their lungs or whatever. 
So what kind of a test will it be? You know, urine or, you know, you cannot enforce that easily. Will, you ha will they have to take the, the person to a hospital to get a blood? Uh, you know, it's not going to work out easily. So I think the, even the testing, just like you do uh, testing for uh, someone that possibly drank too many drinks, yeah. well, it's really going to be a very major issue, and it's going to be very costly. And by the way, um, the, the cost involved in the enforcement or basically managing this program has not been taken into account into into the writing of this. No, it hasn't. You know? and, no, and you recall the, the issue with um, Common Core, how the, 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 superior, the S superior Court of Massachusetts decided to rule against us? Well, it was because there were unforeseen or unexplained financial consequences. Well, what about this one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and a new study has confirmed that marijuana use is up in... Uh, is up in the workforce. Yeah. I mean, they're having sure. problems out in Colorado sure. with it. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, you know, unforeseen things that were never taken into account when they passed it. You know, the argument right. comes down to one of, well, we tried prohibition once before and see how bad that worked. Yeah. Well, yeah. But at the same time, we also had legalized drugs before. Heroin was legal, and yeah. so was uh, most of these things. Yeah. And there was a problem then. I mean, the classic yeah. one that most people don't want to recognize is Porgy and Bess is about a drug addict and a pusher. Mm -hmm. And it was a, an ongoing problem. It used to be sniff and snow. Now it's something else. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to continue the problem. No. And I think no. the uh, president of uh, Endicott College wrote an interesting article that He's got enough problems on his campus right oh, now. He doesn't need another one. And I think this is the, the, the real issue. If we haven't solved the heroin problem, we haven't solved the drunken driving yeah. problem, why do we want to add another avenue of yes. disaster? Well, you know what it all, it's all about money. And that's the reason they're doing it, so that we can have more revenue coming into the state. Follow the money. And that's what's so horrendous and, and, about it. And to it. the point you're making about Colorado, they're finding out that, oh, yeah, we got a lot of tax money, but where's it going? <laughs> Fixing yeah. the problems that's that they right, caused. That's right, they started. It yeah. doesn't pay for itself. No, so, absolutely not. It's a, so I think we can say, vote no on yeah. question four. Yes. We don't, think we we don't need do the problem. With that. No. And as it turns out that we got to the point of the show's over. Ah. <laughs> so, <laughs> ladies nice. and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Uh, there are four ballot questions that you have to look at. Uh, the state does send out an interesting brochure that gives you some idea what the details of these questions are. And it's worth reading. And uh, there's a lot in the papers about them. So when you show up on the 8th of November, uh, aside from worrying about who's going to be the next president, there are some other issues that you have to consider and be prepared to answer. Thank you very much for watching. We appreciate your attention. And we'll be seeing you later.